A surprising decision by Denver City Council now has statewide implications. Last week, Council voted to end its contracts with two private companies that run halfway houses in the city. That vote led to an uncomfortable committee hearing at the state capitol today where public safety chiefs didn't have their answers. Lawmakers were asking. So is a special session needed here? Is there a public safety concern? Politics guy Marshall Zellinger walks us through how a local issue just blew up statewide. What is a halfway house? Denver City Council voted to end the halfway house contracts with two private companies last week, GEO and Core Civic. Together, those companies house 500 plus people. How did they get there? They're either transitioning from prison back into the community or a judge sentenced them directly to the halfway house. According to the head of the Colorado Department of Corrections, 60 percent of prisoners get released straight out of prison when their sentence is done. About 40 percent get out of prison a little earlier and transition into a halfway house. What does that mean? Let's let the executive director of the Department of Corrections explain. It does allow an opportunity for someone to get a job, to go to their work, and then come back to the community corrections facility at night. So it is a, intended as a step-down option back to the community. When Denver City Council canceled its contracts with the Denver halfway houses, that put the fate of more than 500 people in question. Will they be sent back to state prison or Denver County Jail? Will they be released earlier than they should be? What started as a Denver City Council decision is now rippling into a statewide concern. So that brings us to today's committee hearing at the Capitol. Lawmakers wanting to know how the state needs to respond to this and if it could cause a special session to find some new money for prisoners they weren't expecting. Marshall continues our coverage. Is there anything that's stopping these facilities from shuttering tomorrow? I mean, in a short answer, no. This state legislative committee has no power over what Denver City Council did across the street last week. The inability for anybody's forethought of the implications of the decision being made was something that was sorely missed in that meeting. This committee is about reducing the state's prison population, which may have to increase. These unassuming halfway houses in different parts of the city may shut down, leaving 517 people in a pinch. They might have to go back to prison. In the short term, there's just really no way to handle uh, that, uh, that uh, inmate population coming back to us. Currently, those transitioning in these halfway houses are not going anywhere. The companies are still operating for now. But with the uncertainty, these public safety chiefs are concerned about public safety. If clients were to feel as if it was going to be an abrupt shutdown, they'd rather take their chances and walk away, then go back to prison. Part of community corrections is getting them assistance for mental health issues, dependency issues. We want to get those individuals the help they need and deserve. Some of them commit crimes because they have mental health issues, not because they're criminals. This hearing heard about the impact on prisons, the prisoners, and the safety in the city of Denver until this moment. I haven't heard any of you mention the impact on the victims of the offenders in these two facilities. What do you anticipate is the impact specifically around notification and safety planning? Who would like to take that? All right. It's interesting being part of a meeting where you're not the one asking the tough questions. You're watching the tough questions being asked. Those public safety chiefs have been invited back to that same state legislative committee in two weeks to provide answers to some of those questions that they didn't even have the answers for right now. But really, this goes back to Denver City Council, Steve, and Denver City Council will have to work with the city of Denver to figure out what the next step is, whether they're going to try to figure out a new contract with these private companies or try to find new places to transition inmates before they come back to the community. How did they even work on this without a contract in place? We were asking Troy Riggs about that after that hearing, and apparently the contract had expired at the end of June, so they were already working without a contract, and then it just got quashed by city council. There's no handshake agreement. They just continue to do the work, and I believe they're going to get paid out of the Department of Corrections fund or money that comes from the Department of Corrections and not from the city of Denver. So that's an interesting question that I'm still not, I haven't wrapped my head fully around, but they're still getting paid the contractors that the Denver City Council said, we don't want to do business with you anymore. Hmm. Still a lot to sort out with this. Mm -hmm. Marshall, thank you.